It's happening. Mortgage interest rates are already rising. So what kind of conversations do you need to be ready to have with both your buyers and your sellers? We're going to chat about that today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 198, getting awfully close to the magic 200 number there, Jan O'Brien. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you'd like to find our show notes, you can find them over at WBNLpodcast.com. Interest rates going up. Yeah, they're, they're already, they're already, no, they're already moving up, you know? We, we, we were just talking about pre-show about not talking about the economics of all this. And I definitely do not want to get into all that because you read articles and they say things like inflation goes up. That means interest rates. Well, short term interest rates are going to go uh, up. And uh, uh, Jerome Powell, the, the Federal Reserve chairman, you know, has been indicating this for months. And then oh, wow, apparently yeah. the other day really sent the signal that four times next year, maybe quarter points, which doesn't always necessarily you know, the mortgage, the mortgage industry has already moved rates. I mean, as we record this today, it's January 28th. The interest rates for the most part are around 3.5, 3.5, 3.5% already. And everything that I have been seeing and reporting on has been interest rates are going to go up, you know, maybe to 3.7 or 4 by the end of the year. Well, I feel like that's going to happen a lot sooner. Mortgage, the mortgage industry just makes moves regardless in a way. They kind of follow suit, but at the same time, they're not waiting. They're already moving them up. All right. So interest, that's what we're going to talk about today. What happens when the interest rate moves up? How does that change the buying power for any buyers that you have on the fence? Uh, and we have a lot of great material to share with you because if you're armed and educated, and we're going to give you some of those things. And guess what? Guess where I got most of this material besides a few things that I just researched. I got it from my good friends over at Keeping Current Matters, my favorite, favorite resource of all the years I've been doing business. I love Keeping Current Matters. I'm a huge fan. I use it all the time, every day. I post my blog post up there. I'm going to share one today with you. And I find there's so much content there I can use in my monthly market updates. And Right now, I went back and I grabbed the charts that I will be putting in my buyer presentation and my seller presentation so we can have, you know, very smart conversations with buyers and sellers about what does this mean for the seller who's selling that might want to go buy? What does it mean for the buyer who's been sitting on the fence and moving up a half a point or a point? How does that impact their ability to buy their buying power? And that's what we're going to we're going to help you with some conversations today. That's right. right. And the Keeping Current Matters link actually is down in the description in the show notes here or in our show notes and also in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. So make sure you check them out. Get get your trial going. All right. So if you're listening, if you're one of our uh, avid listeners or your favorite podcast channel, then you might want to jump over to the uh, YouTube version so you can actually see or go to our show notes where we'll put these charts up. Why don't we put these charts up and a link to the keeping current matters where you'll be able to go get all of these, but you can see these charts and maybe be able to use them. Just give the credit out there to keeping current matters if you're not a member already. All right. So let's talk up first. Let's just put everything into perspective. Now there is some, some other stuff that you can find online that maybe even goes back. I looked at something, but I feel like it's a little overwhelming. It's, it's good enough to go back to like 2018 or 2015 or whatever, but historically interest rates have been all over the place. Actually, it might be useful to go do you remember when they were eight or 15 or t- or 10%? Some of your clients, you know, if they're younger, they're not going to know that. But if they're like me, they're going to be like, yeah, I remember when the interest rates were 12%. And you right remember when they were 19%. Ever saw. 19%. Yeah. Well, I bought my first house uh, eight in the 90s, 8.5% interest VA loan. Okay. So it's all relative, isn't it? But for it many is. years, we've been under 5%. And you know, those are still really low interest rates. And so th- we have a chart here that just shows, shows the 30 year fixed from January 2018 to today. And where are they projected to go? Which I actually think those those rates are, are low. Um, you know, it says quarter one, 3.4. Well, we're already seeing three and a half, but interest rates can go up and down. They can move up and down for different things as well. I mean, I'm talking about mortgage interest rates, not the Federal Reserve and where they're moving the prime. Um, so projections are showing that it's going to move, you know, up 
uh, definitely into the fours and maybe sooner than anticipated. That is still good, but we are going to talk about what that all means now. And it's not going back below three anytime, anytime soon. That's what everyone is saying. I mean, those days of subpar three, two point, whatever, those are gone. And it's not about, oh, I should have, could have, would have. People either, they didn't buy for whatever reason, they didn't jump off the fence for whatever reason. So here it is now. And that's what we want to talk about. What can well, you say? What just think, use? just think, Jenna Brian, for the last how many years now, right? Have we been saying it, historically low interest rates? Take advantage of the historically. I mean, this has been going on for a long time, and I think everyone's kind of used to that. And that's why knowing of how to uh, get into the conversation with your buyers and and sellers, and you know everybody to right. just really be able to kind of say, you know what, it's not the end of the world. The sky isn't really totally completely falling. So take it from there. Now the next chart. Let's go back to that other one real quick. The, the next chart that we are showing on on YouTube, on our video version of the podcast is again uh, the source is Freddie Mac, but Keeping Current Matters put this together, and it's just the current mortgage rate compared to the last five de decades. So in it's currently three point four five when they did this, maybe a little higher, three and a half, three five five. But the twenty tens, it was around four percent. Then in the twenty in the two thousands, rather, it was six point two seven. Wow. And yep. then there it was, 1990s, 8.12. I had an 8.5% interest rate. 1980s, 12.7% was the blended you know, time for the decade. And then the 70s, it was what? Like close to 9%? Yeah, 8.86. All right. And so, again, that's, again, this is a chart that you could use in helping everybody understand the sky's not falling, okay? Now, let's look at the purchasing power. So there is a, a really awesome uh, thing that Keeping Current Matters has in their little arsenal when you're in there. And depending on your marketplace, you can come in and adjust this chart and use it in your uh, download it and put it into your presentation. So I have it set from like a, a, a loan amount from 300 to 380. And then it's right. going from 2.75% up to 4%. And it just shows the difference in a quarter point of an interest rate. So if somebody's getting a $380,000 loan back, uh, you know, again, there's no going back, but at 3%, that was a 1600 principal and interest, 1602 principal and interest. And from three to four, it moves up about uh, a little over, what is that? A hundred and I can't do the math in my head. I want to Well, it's like every quarter of a percentage, it's about 50 bucks. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way to look at it. There yep. you go, Matt. Good stuff right there. Okay. Now, what this doesn't take into account, which is what I'm going to show here in a minute, it's next one, I think, actually. So there's that as a really cool chart just to say. Now, I love this other, um, it's they call it, and um, Keeping Current Matters calls it the cost of waiting. And it's a PowerPoint that you can download. They have literally like just built in, you know, 200, 300, 400, 500. I just grabbed one of them, but I made some adjustments to it because. What we're trying to say is, and again, this is if, if the interest rate today was, so this is the deal. Here's an example. A $400,000 sales price with 10% down, okay, is a $360,000 mortgage, okay? So we have a $360,000 mortgage. And if the interest rate the person could get was 3.25% today, that principal and interest payment would be 15 uh, 15000 $1,566.74 just for principal and interest. Now, let's fast forward to quarter four where maybe it just goes up to 3.8. Now, literally, as I put this together, the interest rates, if, if I was to do this today, we're really closer to three and a half because of just the way things, I mean, today, it could be different tomorrow. It could be down to 3.4 or whatever. But by quarter four, it could be four or higher. But I'm just going to go 3.25 to 3.8. Now, here's the caveat. The way the market is moving, mm -hmm. I put an 8% appreciation. Now, last year and the year before, there was like 20% appreciation over that time period, you know, uh, a year or 10 months or something. So I'm just going to go conservatively with 8%, even though a lot of the economists are saying, about 7% is what's going to be the appreciation. I actually think that's low because inventory is low. And because right. of what we're talking about here today, Matt, because the interest rates are moving, more people who've been waiting on the sidelines are going, I better get in and try to buy before the interest rates go up, which is causing even more pressure on not enough inventory, uh, which is going to do what? Cause the prices to continue to increase. So low inventory, 
super high buyer demand and interest rates still relatively being low. But people seeing it go from three to four are saying I better jump in. But let me finish this story here. So 2022 Q4, 8% appreciation. And that's an annual appreciation I, I added into this. It makes that same house worth 432000 Okay. So if the person wanted the same house, because they love the house, the area, the location, they'd have to be willing to pay 30, 32,000 more for it almost a year later. And then their uh, mortgage would, with 10% down still, all things equal in this example, goes to 388,800 at 3.8%. The principal and interest jumps up to 1811. That is a 245 almost rounded up, $245 a month difference. Now, you can say, well, some people are okay with that. Some people might be okay with having a higher price. If they're bound because of their, um, a buyer is bound because of their qualifications and they can only afford a $1,500 principal and interest payment and maybe a, you know, 2000 plus total payment, 2200, then it just means what? They're going to have to go to a lower price point. They can't buy that 430,000 or they're going to have to put more down payment down. So having tools like this, now the cost of waiting slide is about waiting and trying to get folks to make a decision now and waiting till it goes up could be a $245 a month payment. It doesn't seem like much, but when you do it over the 360 payments of a 30 year mortgage, that's $88,000. No, you know, $244, right? you know, doesn't, when you just look at it, just face value like that doesn't seem like a lot, but a lot, a lot of people are already buying a little bit, pushing their, per, pushing their mortgage rate in the first place. Right? right. So that can make a big difference. But I have a question to ask you, Jan, because you're on mm -hmm. the street and you do this every day. Now, clearly we're having an inventory issue. So, you know, there's probably not going to be for a very long time, a time where sellers are not looking at multiple, multiple, multiple offers. Right. But how, if you flip this to the seller side just a little bit if this does if, if people are pushed out of certain price points because of the the rate going up depending upon what it's going up and you have it going up here what you said about five oh, six five and a half percent really or excuse me 0.5 no. percent yeah 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 less than yeah. a point yeah point five yeah in, but still it's going to make a difference at some point if the rates keep going up this is going to absolutely impact pricing Right on the seller side of um, it, it can, of, but but that's a great point you bring up, and I think in the short run, not so much, depending right. on the area because, because of the inventory of issue of not enough inventory. Right. So when everyone talks about inventory coming on the market from different reasons, like maybe we're going to have more people who are behind in their payments, or they, they were in the forbearance even that they have equity. But any properties that come onto the market are absorbed immediately because there's such a high buyer demand. But to your point, as time goes by and we move past this and we move into the next year in 2023 and maybe even more inventory comes on the market, I do think it's going to impact you know, maybe not as many people can buy. That's the point you're making. A seller yeah, doesn't have think, as many uh, options. Right. It's certainly, especially if you have a place that's right in that, you know, on that line of the price point where people are kind of uh, searching for, for homes. And I think that the reason why I'm bringing that up is I think this is, obviously this is a buyer, a uh, big buyer conversation, but this is a conversation you need to start having with your sellers too. And it may not be happening right now or even in 2022, but down the line, sellers are going to have to, you're going to have to be counseling your sellers that, you know, that they're going to well, have to be little bit more realistic. And to your point, sellers potentially are mostly buyers. going to be buyers also. So That's right. it, here's what it's doing now. And then how is waiting to sell your home? So there might be people out there thinking, well, maybe I need to get my home on the market and why people haven't sold is like they haven't had any place to go. Well, or they have, they don't want to, they want to sell at the high end here and also be able to take you know, and then maybe get a deal. Well, the reality is this is why I feel like so many people are just holding on to their property. It's increasing in value. Where am I going to go anyway? If I'm staying in the same general area, I'm going to compete for multiple offers. I'm probably going to have to have a higher payment or if I want to kind of stay the same, if I want to go, if I want to size down, it might be that they're having a similar payment to the house that they're in now. Right. I know there are yeah. so many things to consider. Uh, and but these all these things are reasons why there's not enough inventory. Just just the general amount of sellers who generally put their homes on the market hasn't been the same in the last two years during the pandemic for all the different reasons. So 
you know, there's just a lot of things at work here and at play. But the point we're making is that when you have tools at your disposal and you can, you know, the keeping current matters is just so awesome. You don't have to sit and create them. They know what you need and you can use them and you can have them and just really come across and help explain it better. Okay. Yep, yep. The next tool that I love, and I have it as part of my Agent Fire website. I, I love this Agent Fire website, this low, hyper local website I'm using. And I've seen it on many, many uh, real estate websites, a mortgage calculator, an interactive mortgage calculator. If you want to see how this one works in the, if you go to the show notes or if you're watching on YouTube, just go below and we'll have a link to my website where this is like a really awesome calculator. You can put in and change any of the payments and it breaks it all down. It has the amortization. It has kind of the life of the loan, what you pay and so forth. But you can do very quickly make a sit and use your own tool with a buyer and show them that if the interest rate goes to here and how does it impact your payment? Now, you know, it's important when you're talking to your buyers, it's all about what are you comfortable with your payment? What do you qualify for? But what do you want to keep your payment at? If somebody says, I want my payment to be under 2,500 total. Well, then we can go back into that and then come up with a sales price based on what's happening in the market and the interest rates. So if you want 2,500, a year ago, we're not there anymore, right? A year ago, you could have bought that $450,000 house, but now you can't because the right. interest rate has gone up in your payment if you want to keep your payment at $2,600 or $2,500. But you have to have tools to help somebody see that, not just tell them that. People are visual, and when you give them the facts and you give them the charts and graphs, it's like, there it is in front of you. What do you want to do? What's important to you? Include I got to say, I had never been to your mortgage calculator on your site before, Jan. This is the best mortgage calculator I have ever I seen. There's so much information in this thing. If you did this, you sit down in front of your buyers and you went through this and did exactly what Jan was just talking about. This is super, super impressive. Well, and the way I use this is in, in the buyer follow-ups that I have when I'm starting to work with someone is, hey, you know, use this tool to get a sense of what you can have your payment at based on how much money you're putting down and get a sense of that. So when we talk to you, I can help um, explain it or, you know, but people understand intuitively what to do. It's just, you, you, they're all over. They're all online. All the bank rates and so forth have these calculators. So, but you should have one is my whole point. So use a mortgage calculator in addition to some of these charts and graphs to show the buying power by an interest rate changing, moving up or down. But right now we're in the moving up phase. And then we also wanted to cover um, this rent versus buy analysis because this is so intriguing to me. You know, it's been like this for a long time now. Rate rental uh, rental rates have just gone skyrocketed and uh, you know, we have, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I had, I saw a graph on the keeping current matters that just said historically the rates, the rental rates have just gone up phenomenally. Um, oh, you have this in here. Okay, cool. Yep. So here, go back up. Sorry. I forgot about this. Matt, Matt, Matt is so awesome. You already squared away all this. Okay. So the median, look at this. If you're not seeing this, I'm uh, describing a chart that can basically say, oh my God, it looks like the COVID Right. This is the most terrifying the chart I have ever seen. This is a terrifying chart. <laughs> it looks like at the peak of COVID, how many cases there are. And it's basically the median asking rent since 1988. But listen to this um, this forecast. Um, in 2022, this is coming from, pretty sure this came from uh, National Housing Forecast from Realtor.com. In 2022, we expect this trend will continue in fuel rent growth at a national level. We forecast rent growth of 7.1% in the next 12 months. Can you back up one? I think that maybe. Yeah, there was another one. I just wanted to show the graph. Uh, oh, uh, here we go. National median rent has increased by a staggering 17.8%. So it's right at the pace of home price appreciation, right? So in context, rent growth from um, January to November uh, pre-pandemic was 2.6% in the pre-pandemic years from 2017 to 2019. So we went from 2.6%, uh, you know, rental prices. That would be like, you know, your rent's up and it's going to be another 50 bucks a month, right? Now it's like, it's $200 a month more or whatever. 17.8%. It's crazy. So what's the bottom line here in having a conversation with buyers it's definitely cheaper if somebody can qualify for a mortgage and many people don't believe that they can. There are all kinds of uh, different loans that are out there, not just the conventional and FHA and VA. There are other programs that in the long run, in the short run, 
all around, they will be uh, paying less, 100% less, right? So this is where you can sit down and do that rent versus buy analysis and and go over these key points. Now, I want to go through these key points. And again, this came from an awesome article on keeping from Keeping Current Matters that you could share with people that you could use to learn from, like I'm doing right now, to talk about what are the benefits of buying versus uh, renting, right? And clearly, it's having a mortgage that was probably less than rent. And then, of course, what's the next big thing that you're doing when you go there is you're building equity. You can't build equity when you are in a rental, you know, and, and when you're in a rental, you are literally, you know, providing the, uh, bringing the mortgage down for whoever owns the apartment complex, the, the building, the, um, the place that you're renting. Now, some people are fine with renting, uh, and they don't want to have all the other things that come with it, but here's the deal. If you're, it, you know, it's a wealth building thing. So if somebody is starting out and, you know, they're up and coming, this is a way for millennials, everyone else, anybody really to start getting in on this wealth gain. I mean, I just saw an article yesterday, Matt, that talked about how this past year, maybe even two years, how much uh, wealth was gained in the equity of properties. Now, of course, it's like the stock market. It's worth what it is today. If the prices yes. ever change, then your equity gets eaten up. But for two years, we've had this crazy equity growth and people have what do we say when you, I just did one for Dunedin here, 75,000 thereabouts was the median equity gain um, for, for uh, homeowners that are in Dunedin. It was about 64,000 for Vegas, higher for California. That's significant. That's in one year. I mean, you can't make that kind of money anywhere else. You can't yep. get 20% return on your, on your investment. And now that's not going to continue. We can't continue that. But the whole point is renters miss out on equity gains and building their net worth over time. And you get into a property, it may not be I'm talking to a buyer right now. We, we've been working for months and it's been really difficult for him to find something. And and we went from like 400,000. Now we're down looking at condos and townhomes and the twos and threes. And it's like, because his rent's about to go up. He's about to have to pay $2,500 a month for rent. And he could get a payment that could be under 2000 and be building equity. And maybe it's not his forever house. Maybe it's a place that he gets and he lives in it for a while and it becomes an investment property or he uh, holds on to it for the long run or he sells it and, and gets a gain out of it. Right. So that that these are things to talk to people about. And then the other benefits that are in the um, you know, you can customize when you when you when you buy your own property, it's yours. You can do what you want with it. You can upgrade it. You can paint. You know, you have to get permission to do all those things. Of course, you have to pay for all that, too. <laughs> you, you, I knew you were going to do that <laughs> when you live in a place. Somebody will, who, who shall go unnamed. You don't ever pay for any of that maintenance. It's what it's, it's, it makes me laugh. Because this, is, paying for. this is where, you know, it's going to be uh, buying a home can be the money pit. Right. Because it is exciting to be able to do your own stuff. But oh my God, there you are. It adds up. Okay, so you have that, and then finally, the the point for four key points for you know why buy versus rent is um, a lot of people who rent don't think that they they're stuck, right? They don't think they have this mobility. Like uh, you know, if you're in a rent, if you're in a rental, of course you're you're stuck in the lease until you have to go. Uh, but owning a home it does provides right now in the current conditions in the in the past many years that things sell a lot quicker than you think, right? It, I can remember when I first got going in the business, I mean, things would be on the market for 60, 90 days. And so right. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Do you matter? Remember when, no. some, no. when we were in a buyer's market, that was like 14, 15 years ago when the, when the, the great recession and there were so many properties on the market and not enough buyers, that's the opposite of the market we're in now where things sat for 90, 120 days. Now I can remember the last time there are some properties I'm starting to see around here that are approaching 30 plus days on the market, which tells me one thing, condition price. and price, yep. you know, it's either got something going on or the price is too high, but average, uh, you know, across the board is somewhere between 10 and 20 days for a uh, time on the market. So you have mobility. If you do own, um, you, you can decide to put your home on the market anytime and it's not going to take three, 
to six months to get it sold. Not right now. You know, it's so, it's so funny. You were, we were talking about you know the when the market crashed like it did, and and it, to anyone that's been in real estate for any amount of time, it feels like that was yesterday. But oh I my know. god, it was not yesterday. That was fifteen years ago or fourteen. Yeah, I was just gonna say two thousand and eight was seven and eight. Yeah, two thousand six is when we started seeing all it's the crazy. You know, the foreclosures and short sales, and we lived in it. I mean, I lived in Vegas in the middle of that, and you better you know, believe we, it. We wrote we wrote courses around it and learned how to deal with the first craziness of multiple offers in my career and uh, have used all that knowledge ever since. And now we're in a similar situation with multiple offers, but because of a uh, different reason, not enough inventory, you know, uh, more cash, more investors. Okay. So that really is some good stuff there about, you know, if you're not comfortable explaining some of the things that we just talked about, then you need to go get educated, go, go, subscribe to keeping current matters, you know, go get all that stuff coming to you so that you can feel, um, honestly, I just feel more confident and you will feel more confident when you're knowledgeable and you can have those conversations and it just helps you be, be that local market expert, which is what because we're all you, you about. Know, th that knowledge is power, right? Because not only are you uh, being able to explain, but you, you are possibly really helping someone to get off the fence and actually save money in the long run and talk about really servicing your client. That is the one. Talk about a client for life. You save them $244 a month because they buy now instead of eight months down the line. And uh, they're going to love you for that. That's right. right. There you go. So get ready for the conversations. You should be having them now. Get up to speed. Go check out our show notes and go get that thing. Keeping current matters things. And you'll you'll thank me for it because it's just it's just the best uh, way to stay on top of everything, in my opinion. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. All right. Well, all right. Uh, it looks like that's going to be a wrap. Hey, before I go there, Jan, um, Tuesday, Lunar New Year. Happy Lunar New Year coming up here. You're the tiger. That's which us. We, which we are, by the way. Uh, today, I put in my uh, sweet peas note in her lunch, the qualities of the tiger, which are confident, uh, unpredictable, um, uh <laughs> Uh, compassionate, loved by others. Um, really, it was all pretty great stuff about the tiger. And oh. I was driving, I was actually, I drove her to work today and I was driving home and I get a call. She goes, you know what? That note made me laugh and I love my tiger. So <laughs> <laughs> that kind of made me happy. Well, that's awesome. A little, a little uh, look at this. It's the year of the tiger and you got to love it, man. I'm going to embrace that. The year of the tiger. Um Beautiful. Yeah. Right, Lunar right. New Year. When, when is it celebrated again? Uh, the 1st through the 15th. Okay. So nice. get out there and, and uh, uh, celebrate over the next uh, the next week and a half or two weeks here coming down the line. All right. Well, that is a wrap for episode 198 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. All of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Go to our show notes and get the information that we give today or gave today. All the graphs and charts are there, plus that link to Keeping Current Matters, which you really should check out if you have not done that yet. So that's it. Any last words, Jana Brand? That's it. Make it a great day. All right. Live the Get life up. you dream, people. Get up. Get out and be forever wandering. <laughs> but not lost. There you go. <laughs> ah, yay. Go team.